Leo has always been a very lucky person. You probably also know someone who is lucky in literally everything. No matter how crazy an idea may seem if a person like Leo is involved, it is sure to exceed all expectations. Building saunas in the winter and furnaces in the summer, why not? Invest all the hard-earned fortune in another crazy project, absolutely yes. It got to the point that Leo even helped several friends get rich simply because they were around and repeated after him. Luck has always followed Leo. But, like a jealous lady, Luck didn't want to share her beloved with any other woman. So Leo was unlucky in his personal life. It started in his youth. When his girlfriend Lisa broke up with him, Leo has decided to never fall in love again. And then everything went wrong, and even if he met a nice girl, it always turned out that she had a boyfriend, or that she was not as understanding as it seemed at first glance. With the improvement of the financial situation, everything became even more complicated. A millionaire can't just sign up on a dating website. Sooner or later, one of the potential gold diggers will find out about his money, and that will cause many problems. Of course, his friends encouraged him and urged him not to lose heart. There were many good girls around, but Leo was convinced not enough, and all the good girls are surely already in love with someone. Leo respected marriage. He would never date a married woman. To have a mistress meant to disrespect himself. Leo's close friend and business partner, Mark, once said, you'll stay single because of your life principles, he said. However, Leo was convinced that there was nothing excessive in his expectations. He wanted to find a smart girl suitable for an interesting conversation. And Leo didn't expect her to be a recluse or a charismatic person, a beauty or a brilliant scientist. Everything was simple. He wanted an understanding woman who could hold a conversation, nothing more. Of course, a pleasant appearance would be a bonus. But over the years, Leo realized. Nowadays it is easy to make a real beauty even from a very simple and modest girl, but the scientists still haven't learned how to insert brains into an empty head. It was much easier centuries ago, Mark said. If a woman had wide hips, it meant it would be easy to bear children, and that was enough. But nowadays we want only smart, understanding women. The man said wrinkling his nose every century has its problems. But Leo wasn't worried about that he had accepted the fact that he was unlucky in his personal life. Maybe in time things would change. There was only one thing that upset the man, it was always painful to be alone during the holidays. It seemed like the pain of loneliness had gotten worse over the years. When you're 25, it feels like the whole world is yours. When you're 35, the world already seems more complicated. And when you're 45, it was especially difficult to celebrate Christmas in his very humble, religious family. Christmas has a deep, sacred meaning. Leo's parents were already very old. Even holidays at that age become a burden. So they didn't get together for the holidays anymore. Most of the time, Leo would just drive around the city all day long. At least that way, people surrounded him, and life didn't seem so hopeless. Of course, he had a personal driver, and he himself was sitting in the back seat of a fancy car. The last time he got behind the wheel himself was probably about seven years ago. It's not that he didn't like it, but rather, his position in society forced him to have a personal driver. He could ride for hours, staring out the window. The snow was whirling there, and garlands illuminated everything around. People were enjoying the wonderful holiday season. Then, the gray working routine was waiting for everyone. Turn toward the mall, Eddie, Leo said lazily. The driver nodded silently. In winter, there was nothing special about the shopping center. But in summer, there were fountains and green groves. Now it was quiet, and there were knee-deep snowdrifts all around. But why had Leo decided to drive here? Was it a coincidence or a tricky fate? The mall was located downtown. It was surrounded by a network of crosswalks, and there were two bus stops behind it and a factory a little farther away. So people were constantly passing back and forth. Leo took a closer look. 
and thought I wonder what kind of lives all these men and women led. Sometimes he liked to watch people just like that, to notice some little things, some patterns. For example, a woman in a thin coat. Obviously she is freezing. She is walking with two shopping bags. Most likely she is a mother of two children. Apparently, there are presents in the bags. Most likely, the mother denies herself everything in order to buy presents for her children. A little farther away he saw a family of father, a mother, and two sons. The older boy is carrying a cape. Probably they are going to their grandparents for Christmas. They're doing the right thing. We have to respect the elderly. It is not difficult for us to visit our grandparents, but it is a real happiness for them to know that we love and appreciate them. Suddenly Leo noticed a little girl in the crowd. She was wearing a light jacket and a scarf. In her frozen hands, the girl was holding a handkerchief with bright blue flowers, visible even from the distance. For some reason, this scene reminded Leo of a movie. Only it was not a girl, but a young woman. The woman in the movie also held a bouquet and looked at people in the crowd. But this little girl wasn't looking at anyone. Leo realized this when he stopped the car and approached her. The driver braked sharply. The boss's request was very unexpected. Leo got out of the car and walked through the crowd to the child. The girl looked so lost, or like her parents had accidentally forgotten her there. But no, children in such situations usually look into the crowd, crying, calling for someone, waiting for their parents. But this little girl did not wait for anyone. It was as if she accepted her situation and just waited for everything to be over. And then Leo appeared. Hello. He addressed the girl. She didn't even immediately realize that he was talking to her. Leo gently touched the little girl's shoulder. She flinched and looked up at him with blind eyes. Oh, anyone in his place would have been confused. The little girl blinked her blind eyes. If she could see, she would be looking exactly at Leo's face. She was about seven years old. It was all that Leo could say. Are you lost? The girl shook her head negatively. Where's your mom? She didn't answer that question either. Have you been here long? Leo thought. Maybe the little girl is also mute. But then she finally spoke. I live here. We're here. The girl pointed somewhere uncertainly. It seemed like she was pointing to the entire lot in front of the mall. Nothing specific. Leo tried to clarify. In one of those buildings. Is there anything I can help you with? Not in a building. The girl replied reluctantly, I live right here. This street is my home. I sleep on the pipes. Leo muttered in shock. How can that be? Why aren't the police doing anything? Or don't they patrol the streets anymore? I recently saw police cars driving around, but no one cares about kids sleeping on heat pipes at all. It's horrible. What's your name? Julie. The girl blinked again. Her congenital lack of vision made her look a little like a fish with her clear eyes. Do you know what Christmas is? Leo asked suddenly. The girl shook her head. Unbelievable. She didn't even know that. It's a very special holiday. You know, any of your deepest wishes can come true on Christmas Day because it's a magical time. Both the guardian angels and God hear you. What wish would you make, Julie? The girl thought for a moment. It was so strange to see a change of facial expression on a face that lacked the most important element, a look that could say more than words. But Leo saw while the girl was thinking. Her expression changed several times. I want to have a home, Julie finally said. Can God fulfill that? Or am I asking too much? The girl's last word struck Leo's heart like a knife. She's only about seven years old. But she already thinks she's asking for too much. Children should dream globally without any limits. Otherwise, this world would just go crazy. I think God really wants you to have a home. That's why I'm here. Leo gently stroked the girl's hat. Her thin hat slid off her head, uncovering her tangled hair. It was scary to think when was the last time she brushed it. Only when there had saved her from lice. But he should check anyway. Just in case, did you talk to him? Are you here for me? The blind eyes seemed to light up. 
and Leo realized he couldn't leave this place without the girl. Come on, Mr. Eddie is waiting for us. Instead of answering, Julie took the man's hand and walked merrily toward the car. Eddie was shocked at what was happening, but he didn't say a word. After all, he was just the driver, and he didn't want to get involved. But Leo was in doubt. He thought that in the 21st century, it was impossible to just take a child home. You have to go to some authorities and prepare some papers. The reality was weird and cruel Leo couldn't just take a child home without legal obstacles. But at the same time anyone could abandon a child in the winter, and no one would care. That doesn't make sense. He looked at Julie again, her blue nose began to thaw, and the girl began to scratch her nose non-stop. She was sick. No surprise. She was obviously dressed out of season. Some people even dressed their dogs to keep them warm. But the child was wearing an old jacket. Let's stop by the store, Leo suggested. You are freezing. We'll get you some normal clothes. Julie looked at the clothes with blind eyes, as if she wanted to evaluate her appearance. Then she touched her old jacket and came to a disappointing conclusion. Yeah, it's not a good idea to wear those clothes. Eddie understood everything without words and drove to the nearest mall. Now it was better to go to the mall full of children's clothing stores and quickly buy any warm clothes. Later Leo would definitely buy her something better. But right now she just needs some proper warm clothes. Mister, why is your child dressed so poorly? The sales girl said indignantly. Sometimes Leo hated modern times. Everyone pretends like they care about each other and everyone tries to scold you for doing the wrong thing. But in fact, no one really cares. My ex-wife brought her to me like this. Leo lied confidently. I'm really shocked. That's why we came here to buy some new clothes. The girl raised her eyebrows in surprise. How can that be? What kind of mother would act like that? It's incomprehensible. So the saleswoman immediately began to choose clothes for the girl. In half an hour, they were already leaving the store. Leo was carrying several bags and Julie was wearing a new jacket. Are you my daddy now? Julie asked in surprise. I guess so. Leo replied with a smile. He was anxious to get home, but he had to stop at the drugstore first, for Julie had begun to cough. I'll call a doctor when we get home. What if it's pneumonia? But he wasn't sure if any of the doctors would be willing to drive across the city on a holiday night. They got home. Everything seemed fine, but there was one unsolved question. What to do with the girl next? And where did she even come from? What if her parents are looking for her? But, usually, in such situations, there are photos of missing people all over the city. Just the day before Leo saw a photo on a pole, someone was looking for an elderly man in his 60s. But for some reason, no one was looking for a little blind girl. Despite the fact that Leo was a millionaire, he had a relatively small house. It had two floors and ten rooms in total, but still, Leo hired a housekeeper. In conversations with friends, Leo frankly confessed, I don't know how to do any of the housework. I can invest money profitably. But I have no idea how to clean the stove or make pasta. So Emily was in charge of the housework. She is the same age as Leo's older sister. Leo had always respected her and treated her like a business partner, not a servant, and it was surprising to Emily. She often said I'm just a servant in this house. You are definitely not just a servant, said Leo. If it were not for you, my house would be in disrepair. It was the holidays, but Leo had to ask Emily to come over urgently. And please, bring Waffle with you. That was the name of the charming brown dog that Leo had given Emily for her birthday. At first, she wasn't happy. What is that? Why do I need a dog? But then she loved the dog as if it was her child. If I don't take him with me now, he won't let me in when I get home, Emily said cheerfully and hung up the phone. Great, Leo thought. She knows better how to deal with children. As it turned out, Leo had no idea how to treat a cold or flu. He only knew about such ineffective remedies as milk and honey or herbal tea. Probably it's not that bad, 
but maybe there's something more effective. So, they stopped at a pharmacy on the way. But the pharmacist was not a doctor. A nice kind woman gave him a lot of medicines, but Leo didn't know how to use them. So he looked funny from the outside. The big guy wearing an expensive suit was sitting on the couch, reading instructions, and Julie was sitting quietly beside him. Do we have a Christmas tree? The girl asked unexpectedly. Leo bit his lip. Even though Julie hadn't seen anything, he didn't want to lie. Leo never bought a Christmas tree or decorated the house. All the holiday decorations reminded the man even more that he was lonely. Well, there's no Christmas tree. But I think we already have garland, Leo said with an embarrassed smile. Leo rustled up a huge amount of medication instructions, and Julie laughed softly. Yeah, there was something really weird about it. He literally kidnapped a child in the middle of a city, went shopping, dressed her, and now he took her home to cure her. Leo thought it was necessary to contact someone from the police. He had some connections there, too. Good idea, he concluded aloud. Julie perked up. She resembled a small chick in behavior, not yet fully fledged. I'm hungry, the girl said hesitantly, and Leo tapped himself on the forehead with his palm. Of course, why hadn't he thought of that right away? The girl was living on the street, she hardly had enough to eat. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at cooking. Do you want a sandwich? It didn't sound good, but it was the only thing Leo could offer the child. Concluding that a sandwich was better than nothing, Leo went into the kitchen, and Julie remained seated on the couch in the living room. She could navigate pretty well, but the unfamiliar room was frightening. No person felt comfortable in unfamiliar spaces, much less a blind person. Leo, she heard from the hallway. There was a small hallway where everyone could take off their shoes to avoid dragging mud and snow into the rooms. It was also where Waffle was usually left before washing the dog's paws. Emily always called out his name loudly upon entering the house, announcing her arrival. Leo smiled. He hurriedly wiped his hands and walked out of the kitchen. Emily was already standing in the living room, holding her coat in her hands and looking at the girl in surprise. Emily knew all of the boss's nieces, so she didn't understand who this child was. So instead of greeting her, she inquired plaintively, Hi kiddo, who are you? Emily, this is Julie, Leo interjected. I have something to tell you. I don't understand. The woman grumbled. I've only been away for half a day. I came back, and you already have a child. Leo took Emily into the kitchen, where he told her everything. The woman listened attentively and never interrupted him. When the story came to an end, Emily walked thoughtfully to the refrigerator and looked for something. Are you judging me? Leo asked directly. Well, actually, yes. The woman replied calmly, who feeds a child sandwiches? I'll make chicken and vegetables now. I've told you a million times that sandwiches are not healthy food. The man breathed a sigh of relief. He didn't really need Emily's approval, but he just wanted someone to support him. It's important to know that you've done the right thing. What about the paperwork? Emily clarified. I'm not an expert, but I guess I need to fill out some paperwork and notify the police. I'll ask my friends to help speed up the process. That's good, Emily nodded. But what if they take the girl to an orphanage? I'm sure she's already suffered more than most of us. Yes, that's why Leo decided to talk to his friends first. He dialed the number of his lawyer, assuming that Jonathan was the best in such matters, and he was right. Yeah, it's a challenge, especially during the holiday season, Jonathan muttered on the other end of the phone. Anyway, I've solved even more difficult problems. If she really is an orphan, no one has reported her missing. Consider her to be your daughter already. Is it possible for her to stay at my house during the adoption process? There was silence. Jonathan hesitated for a moment. You said she had low vision. I think she's completely blind. That's the medical circumstance. We should have her examined. If that's really the case, the orphanage doesn't like to take care of such kids. So there's a good chance that during the adoption process, she could stay with you. Send me. Leo dropped his phone, 
and Emily dropped the spoon she was using to stir vegetables. They heard the girls cry from the guest room. They rushed to little Julie. It turned out that nothing terrible had happened. Waffle sneaked into the house and seeing the child, rushed to lick her hands because the dog loved children. But frightened Julie screamed, as if it was not a small dog in front of her, but a huge monster. Julie, it's okay, I'm right here. Leo quickly crossed the room and sat down next to the child. She immediately clung to him and began to cry softly. Waffle, you rascal! Emily exclaimed indignantly. Who allowed you to enter the house with your dirty paws? And you scared the child. Shameless dog. Waffle stepped back, looked guiltily at Emily, and lowered his head. And when Emily stomped her foot, the dog went sadly into the hallway. What a troublemaker. Emily was still furious. Are you okay, sunshine? Emily radiated such a kind aura that Julie reached out to her trustingly. Emily didn't want children when she was young. But Leo had said many times that she would be a wonderful mom. Don't be afraid of Waffle, Emily said, stroking the little girl's tangled hair. He's not scary. If you saw him, you wouldn't be frightened at all. Such an expression might have offended an adult, but not a child. Julie immediately began to trust Emily, so she barely audibly replied, I'm scared. Of Waffle, Emily laughed. Leo looked sternly at Emily, but she didn't even notice. Waffle is the kindest dog in the world, he can't hurt anyone. Not Waffle, the girl whispered even more quietly. Leo tensed. He felt some trust developing between them. Perhaps, now he would learn the story of this poor little girl. And he was right Julie big in the long story. Are you serious now? Leo nodded. He was sitting in his lawyer's office. For Leo's sake, Jonathan had even come to the office, even though he hadn't planned to. That's the advantage of highly paid private professionals. They can choose any schedule that suits them. You mean her parents abused her? I have no reason not to believe Julie, Leo answered bluntly. She told me she lived in the countryside. From what I understand, her parents are not poor people. They have five other children besides Julie. Except she's the only one who was born almost blind. Unbelievable. They decided to get rid of a girl because she's blind. Jonathan was shocked. How can someone be so cruel? Well, they didn't really try to get rid of her, the man objected. But they didn't love her either. Her mother was always forcing her to do almost all the housework. And in a family with many children, responsibility is divided by age. So, her mother and the younger children simply used her. Nightmare. Even a healthy child can't do all the housework. I'm not even talking about a blind girl. And what did she do? She ran away. The dog she was supposed to feed attacked her. Almost bet her. The girl got scared and hid in the car. When they drove into the city, she escaped. I don't know the details. She doesn't want to tell. I think someone helped her, Jonathan said doubtfully. It doesn't look realistic. She got in the car and escaped on her own. How did she even know they were already in the city? I mean, she eyes blind, Leo. Leo had been expecting this question. In fact, the girl had told him a completely different story that no one would ever know. Leo decided that he would make sure that the girl would never go back to those horrible people. Even though his story was not the most plausible, it would be enough for the adoption authorities, so they would register the child in his name. He would pay any money for everything else, and he directly told Jonathan about it. Yeah, interesting, Leo, Jonathan replied absent-mindedly. Okay, most likely, the law will be on your side. No one is going to return a child to parents who let her be in the freezing cold for days and sleep on heating pipes. The girl has to talk to a guardianship officer and a child psychologist. It's good if the doctors have fixed the traces of her being in the freezing cold. They have fixed it, Leo interrupted. Emily took her to the hospital today. There they examined her and found signs of frostbite and bruising, two hematomas. Jonathan looked up expressively but said nothing. After all, he is just a lawyer. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow and handle everything. You can already prepare the room for the girl, 
She is almost your daughter. Are we going to apply for welfare? Welfare, Leo wondered. Well, she's blind. She needs proper care. You can ask the state for some money for her. It's standard procedure for disabled children. Leo thought about it. Why did he need welfare? Fate had brought this little girl to him. Moreover, it happened on Christmas Day. Could there be a clearer and more understandable sign? Leo is not a poor man. Perhaps that's why the girl was brought to him. I don't need any welfare. I'll take care of all the expenses. Jonathan whirled his pencil thoughtfully in his hands but smiled. Leo was a man with a kind heart. In the modern world, not many are willing to let a stranger into their home without expecting some benefit in return, even though that stranger is a helpless little girl. It seemed like Leo's life finally had a purpose. Okay, Jonathan, I gotta go. I have to pick up Julie and Emily from the hospital. The men shook hands and said goodbye. The driver was waiting for Leo, and together they drove to the children's hospital. Leo had no idea he would have to be in such a place so soon. Honestly, he didn't think he would ever have children at all. Emily quickly found common ground with Julie, even though they had only known each other for two days. So Leo decided he couldn't find a better nanny. He picked them up from the hospital and they drove home. There's so much snow, Julie, Leo said as he helped the girl out of the car. Do you want to play snow angels? Can I? The girl whispered excitedly. Sure. Waffle was also eager to play in the snow. The fright passed, and the girl got used to the dog overnight and let him sleep in her room. At that time, a young blonde woman stood behind the fence. She didn't risk coming any closer. She didn't want anyone to see her. Her plan had succeeded. The girl was adopted by a good, rich man. She couldn't have wished for anything better. Good luck, daughter, she whispered and never appeared in her daughter's life again. In fact, she had never considered this girl to be her child. If it hadn't been for the pressure of her parents, she would have given up her daughter almost immediately. But they insisted that she couldn't abandon her child. But she was only 20 years old. What would she do with a disabled child on her own? Her parents weren't eager to take care of her or provide for her. People would say she's cruel. So what? The truth is that a disabled child needs a special nurse and a lot of other things. But she was only 20 years old. She wanted to enjoy life and couldn't give her daughter anything good. The girl decided not to accept her fate, but to try to give a second chance for a normal life for herself and her daughter. Julie will be better off with this kind man. He surrounded her with such care and attention, which even she, her own mother, could not give her. It would be better for everyone. Perhaps she would regret it later. But now the woman turned around and walked easily into her new life. And Julie finally got the father she never had. And he turned out to be more kind and caring than her mom. Who is right in this story? Who's to blame for what happened? We don't have the right to judge. The main thing is that the girl's Christmas wish came true.